Hey folks, I'm going to be doing some videos over the next uh, couple of weeks on uh, how to use Shortcuts A Lot version 4 to create SVG files for use in Design Space. So um, one of the important things to note is that you cannot use Shortcuts A Lot to cut with your Cricut Explorer. You can only use it to create your design SVG files for uh, importing into Design Space to cut and create your projects with them. But um, it is an alternative to uh, something like Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator for doing most of the basic things with SVG files that a lot of people want to do or maybe some uh, a little bit uh, more complicated designs or something that's a little bit faster and easier to work with to create the design and then bring it into uh, uh, Design Space, like I said, to cut your project or write it even. So, um, sure cuts a lot for right now, I think it's about $59 on their website. Uh, if you have a previous version that you want to upgrade, they, it shows that the upgrade is about 20 bucks. And so, um, you know, it, it kind of stinks to buy third-party software to do something like that. But, like I said, if you don't, you know, Inkscape is free. And if you want to take the time to learn it, I have playlists on my channel to, to do that. And a lot of other people have videos on uh, Inkscape on YouTube as well. So Craftsbot 2 and, and some other folks. And it's really not that hard to use. But a lot of people uh, you know, really struggle with it. And something like Shortcuts A Lot puts them in an environment that's very similar to working inside of Design Space. So you have the mat layout, uh, the layers panel, and the tools. So, so a lot of things are very similar. And it might, uh, you know, translate better to allow someone to learn how to use it and do the basic things that they want to do like adding a shadowed layer font or shadowing an image or tracing an SVG file uh, for uh, uh, basic use. So um, I'm going to uh, show you some examples in this video uh, of how easy it is to use and then uh, over the next couple of weeks I'm going to be doing some more videos to uh, show you that. So the important things are that you do have to pay for it. You can download the trial and uh, see how well you like it and how easy it is to use before you buy it. You just can't save your SVG files out of it. So I would encourage you to do that and uh, uh, you know see how you like it first uh, the link to uh, buy it will be in the video description down below and so you can go uh, on their website and uh, uh, purchase it or download the trial and play around with it uh, and see how you like it before you purchase uh, so it is something you have to pay for um, it does do all the basic functions uh, you know of creating SVG files and layered fonts and tracing SVG files things like that uh, I have the other video I posted yesterday on how to do rhinestone templates with it which is superb it does a really good job with that and we'll get more into that in the future videos uh, additionally and um, the other th important thing is, like I said, you cannot use it to cut with your Explorer. You're only going to use it to create SVG files and export those and then import them into Design Space. So I'll switch over to the computer and we'll get started. So the layout uh, you'll see it looks pretty familiar. It has a 12 by 12 mat. And on the right you have some edit uh, panels and layer panels and things like that. So you can adjust the colors and uh, move your objects around on the mat by uh, adjusting and aligning, nudging, things like that, and uh, some different settings as well as your fonts and your layers panel. So the layout is very much like Design Space in a lot of ways. So one of the basic things that people want to be able to do in Design Space that they can't currently is to shadow an image or text for a font. Uh, there are some fonts that come with Design Space that have the shadow layer built in. You just have to unhide them to use them, but many of them do not, and uh, a lot of people don't want to be don't want to have to use something like Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator to uh, work with it. They just want to do some basic functions. So what we'll do is insert some text, and we'll go back to our selection tool. And if you hold your Shift key while you grab the corner, it will adjust and keep things proportional. So some of the features are similar to Inkscape. And up here at the top you can change your handles, which are the little things on the corners, from advanced to basic if you like the larger handles. And in order to shadow a font, all you have to do is right click on it, click Appearance, Add Shadow Layer. You can choose the color of your shadow layer. And you can also adjust the size of it and some other settings 
with your uh, advanced settings here. So if you want more than one layer, you can do that. And you can vary the size of those layers between each layer. So you can already see how much easier this is to create a shadowed layer image uh, than it is with Inkscape or something else. And you can also do this with just an image. So if I go to my library and I select an image and insert it, again, I can right click, click Appearance, Add Shadow Layer, and I can do the same thing with an image, and it's that easy. So once I want uh, to import this into Design Space, I can click File, Export, and save it as a uh, scalable vector file, an SVG file. And on the Options box, click the Design Space Compatible option and click OK. One of the things you do want to look at is your sizes of your images before you import them in Design Space. Design Space uh, has a problem where it doesn't import things exactly the same size as other programs save them as. It sometimes doesn't vary much, but sometimes it can a little bit and it can affect the look of your design if you designed it to be a specific size here and then in Design Space you import it, it comes in a different size. So here uh, we'll see this is just a little bit over 9 inches. So 9.075 and we'll go import this into Design Space. We'll click Upload Images, Upload Vector, and we'll choose our SVG file. We'll insert that into our project and we'll, we will ungroup it. And when I check the size of that layer, you'll see that it's just a hair larger. It was 9.075 inches in shortcuts a lot. So we can sometimes make adjustments to that to make it exactly the same size. But that's how easy it is to create those SVG files and do shadowed layer fonts and things in shortcuts a lot. And I'm going to do some more videos uh, in the next few days to show you how to do other things with shortcuts a lot to create SVG files that might make your life a lot easier to design with and then bring them into design space in order to cut them or uh, use them to make your projects. If my video has been helpful to you, please subscribe to my channel. And after you subscribe, be sure to click the little gear and check this box so that you'll receive an email notification when I upload a new video. You can also help support my channel by making a small donation on patreon.com slash Troy Young.